Good morning, everyone. Unfortunately, Pastor Lloyd and Reverend Isabel aren't here because Pastor Lloyd is uh, under the weather. And um, Isabel doesn't care to let him alone. So we're missing both of them today, but we'll keep them in our prayers. Kadosh, 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 Adonai Sabaoth, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. Peace be with you. Arlene and I welcome and greet all of you, our visitors and our congregation to St. John's Church of Faith, and we are so happy that you have joined us this morning. I am honored to be here, and I thank you for making this service part of your day, our Valentine Sunday. I would like to just mention that um, I rejoice to see that light triumph over darkness in Egypt when we came home from the funeral yesterday I turned on TV and, it, and they were talking about how all this goodness happened in Egypt but we need to keep our prayers going because this is only the beginning the beginning for Egypt and the beginning I hope and pray for all of the Middle East and us actually when you think about it sometimes <laughs> Please join us in singing the first hymn, Love Divine, hymn number six, standing on the last verse. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Before, before I start this invocation, I ask that everyone please bow your heads, and I ask that you go inside your heart area. Focus on your heart. Feel the love in your heart and see the divine pink light that surrounds your heart. Father, Mother, God, divine universal creator of all that is, we come together before you today on this eve of Valentine's Day and pray for a blessing of divine universal love to rain down upon us. As we focus upon our hearts, we ask that any that are blocked are opened to receive your divine universal love. As we look inward to our hearts, please show us the love that you have for each of us. Let us radiate that love out. Let our love light shine upon the area of 13th and Allen Streets here in our city. Let us share your divine love with those that have lost so much. We pray for them and for those that were lost and are now with you. For those that struggle to make sense of what has happened and what will happen to them next. Shine your divine love on them and give them peace. We pray for Egypt and all the areas in the Middle East that are under duress. We ask that you shower them with your divine love and peace. Guide, surround, protect, and move them to make the right decisions, to do so peacefully and with love. We ask for a blessing for our troops that are ever watchful and protective of so many people. Shed your light and love upon them. Guide them, surround them, protect them with your divine light and love. Lastly, on this eve of the celebration of love, Valentine's Day, we ask that each one of us share our love with one another. We ask that a special blessing of love and light be shed upon our entire world. Place a divine pink bubble of love around our entire planet. Let each person feel that love and let that love penetrate into the core of Mother Earth. We thank you, Divine Creator, for all that we have and for your divine love that shines upon us. In the name of Christ Jesus, the one who taught us to love one another. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We're going to sing the Lord's Prayer. I'm sorry. You can stand by. It's okay. Today's spiritual reading is taken from Alan Seal's Surrender to Love. Love is the all-powerful force of the universe, and everything exists as some manifestation of this force. Therefore, conflict is also love, manifesting in a particular form to bring healing. 
Love is what brings the conflict to the surface so that the resolution can occur. Love is not something into which you enter. It is an energy to which you surrender so that it might enter into and flow through you. Love is not a verb. You cannot love someone or something. You can only be a channel through which love flows. When you fully surrender to love, you are simply letting this all-powerful force manifest through you. The master teacher Jesus said, love thy neighbor as thyself. But, the, but that first presumes that you can allow love to flow through yourself. Therein is the real challenge of that teaching. Allowing love to fo- flow freely toward the neighbor is easy. Indeed, it happens automatically when love flows freely through yourself. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Reverend Karen Kohler for her service. I have something else I'm supposed to read. I'm sorry. (laughs) Oh, goodness. Okay. Um, Spiritual force and power of love. I would like to begin by very briefly speaking about the history of Valentine's Day and the Day of Love. There are many opinions as to the origin of Valentine's Day. We do know that St. Valentine actually existed because archaeologists have found a Roman catacomb and an ancient church dedicated to a St. Valentine. According to the Catholic Encyclopedia, there are at least three early Christian saints by the name of Valentine, a priest in Rome, a bishop in Turney, and one that that nothing is known about except that he met his end in Africa. Surprisingly, all three of these Valentine men were martyred on the 14th of day in February. Most scholars believe that St. Valentine was a priest who lived around 270 AD in ancient Rome. At that time, the Roman Emperor Claudius II realized that he needed more and more capable soldiers and officers to protect the nation from takeover, as things were not going very well for Rome at that time. The emperor felt that married men were more emotionally attached to their families, which made them weak and would not make good soldiers. So he issued an edict forbidding marriage to ensure quality soldiers. Bishop Valentine continued to perform the forbidden marriages, but in secret. It was only a matter of time before Claudius heard about this and Bishop Valentine was arrested. Since he had some saintly abilities, one of them being the power to heal, his jailer, Asterius, had a blind daughter and requested Valentine to restore her sight, which he did, and a deep friendship formed between the two men. Now, Valentine refused to recognize Roman gods, and he even attempted to convert the emperor. Well, you can imagine how angry the emperor was. So on February 14th, Valentine was executed. Just before his execution, Valentine asked for a pen and paper from his jailer and signed a farewell message to Asterius' daughter, which was signed, from your Valentine. And supposedly that is why February 14th became a day for all lovers and Valentine became its patron saint. Thank you. There's a lot more history, but just wanted to give you a brief overview. I found it absolutely amazing that all three of them, all three Valentines, were executed on, not on the exact same day, but February 14th of any given year, whenever that might have been. Um, As I was sitting here, I also remembered something on on television last night. I don't know if anybody saw it. I forgot what channel was even on. Could have been channel three. The um, uh, one of our news reporters that's in Egypt right now. Did I say China? No. Okay. I don't know where that came from. All these Egyptians were kissing him. Babies were kissing him. I just had the chills watching this man because he was absolutely in shock. (laughs) I don't know if anybody else saw that, but that was very cool. I'm glad I had, I turned it on when I did because I got to experience that. Okay, now for my message. Um, Today's message is on the spiritual force and power of love. I wasn't 
really going to speak about love because I, I spoke about love back in 1997. <laughs> and, uh, but it is Valentine's Day Eve, so I kind of had to. <laughs> so I believe that we are all familiar with uh, the Charles Schultz Peanuts cartoon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, visualize in your mind, if you will, Peanuts friend Lucy. <laughs> with her arms open wide, a big red heart on her chest. And Lucy says, I love mankind. It's people I can't stand. <laughs> now, Lucy apparently knew that people can be difficult and that they can make it very hard for us to love them. They can be uncaring, needy, illogical, unreasonable, self-censored, and sometimes downright mean. But we're supposed to love them anyway. So if we decide not to love someone because we do not approve of them, <coughs> the way they look, the way they dress, their religious or political beliefs, or we feel that they are not worthy of our love, we are really only hurting ourselves, no one else. Because love is not about approval or worthiness. We all have moments of poor temper, weakness, and temptation. All of us have done things that afterward we really wish we had not done or said. But you see, by now, <clears throat> excuse me, we should be striving to decrease these occurrences. Am I right? So if approval and worthiness were a prerequisite for love, there would be a giant void in this world. And what would we have? In fact, it's a good bet that the earth probably would have exploded and disappeared a long time ago without love. If we show love and attention to those who are not what we expect them to be, if we show them love and attention, perhaps they would feel it, and perhaps it would then bring out the best in them. Because people can feel what we're feeling and what we're thinking. So if you, if you kind of rein in those feelings of, oh, they're not good enough for me, or whatever, and you fill that with love, the people will feel that change. They may not realize they're feeling it, but I believe they feel it. Now let us understand that sometimes people appear to be illogical and unreasonable when they are simply using a different logic and a different method of reasoning. They may have different world views or different experiences or see a different set of facts than we do. This method of reasoning surely is an example of the power of love. Are you familiar with the word agape? Yes. Agape is love of and from God, whose very nature is love itself. The Apostle John affirms this in 1 John chapter 4, which states God is love. You see, God does not merely love. He is love itself. God's love is not sappy or sentimental. It is the spiritual power and force of love, which is God's nature and expression of his actual being. And yes, God loves the unlovable, not because we deserve to be loved, but because it is his nature to do so. And he must be true to his nature and his character. Every major religion in the world teaches about the power of love. Not only Christianity, but Buddhism, Confucianism, Hinduism, Islam. Sacred love is not based on a feeling, but a determined act of will. A joyful resolve to put the welfare of others above our own. The power and force of love. But this type of love does not come naturally to humans. If we are to love as God loves, that love, that agape, can only come from its true source. This is the love which is poured out by the Holy Spirit into our hearts. Because of God's love for us, we are able to love one another, and it's in our DNA. So, why is it 
that so many people find it so easy to be rude and hateful and throw out meaningless and untruthful accusations, are uninformed but think they know everything and then create problems for others. How can we hate someone we don't know? Why is there so much religious intolerance throughout our world? This is why we have so many wars throughout our entire world. Think about all that's going on out there. In our neighborhoods, in our homes, the international wars are not only about oil and gas and water, it's hatred and jealousy. So where is the major love that the major religions teach to us? Where is the be happy for someone because they have something more than we do? Why should they have it and not us? Could be they worked very hard to get it. They could have worked very hard to get that new car, that raise, that promotion. We just don't know it. So why is it that we cannot seem to forgive someone, especially small things? How many people do you know who have been angry with someone for so long they can't remember why they're angry at that person? Is this the power of love? If you tell me you love me and you really don't mean it, is this the force of love? If you tell someone that you're sorry, and you're really not, or you turn around and you make a nasty remark immediately after the apology, is this an apology? Is this love? I think not. So that apology actually has no energy, no good energy anyway, behind it. We need to stop and think before speaking. Listen to the tone of our voices. If it's sarcastic, demeaning, loud, or nasty, change it, and change it fast. Reread what you send out in your emails and on Facebook. Even typed words sometimes can come across angry and nasty. And be aware that when you write something on Facebook, many others can read it too. So check yourself. Purposely put love into your words and into your action. Purposely, consciously. And eventually, you'll find it very easy. <coughs> Hi. <laughs> I think he just said, I love you. Did anybody hear that? <laughs> That's right. Well, I picked him up and held him. He put his forehead against mine. It was so cute. Now, we all know that love is the most powerful force in the universe. We were all created by it. Everything was created through love. It can, love can wipe away our tears. It can turn a frown into a smile. It can give hope where there was none. It can turn enemies into friends. And it can turn darkness into light. If we truly want freedom in our lives, in our nation, in our world, that can only come from love. Divine, sacred love. The love that is within each and every one of us. Some people have a very hardened heart due to the way they were brought up. Those um, are people that, there are people that have been taught hatred since they were very little. This is strong hatred for anyone who is not like them or does not believe what they believe in. But even these people, within them is love. It's really there. We may find that we have to dig very deeply sometimes to find that divine sacred love, but it really, really is there. So of course, if you want to be loved, the best way to love is to start loving someone else by going up to them and saying, I love you, just like the little baby did. <laughs> I'm not talking about saying I love you unless you mean it. You must feel it very deeply within yourself. This is extremely important. It's more than just saying it and feeling it. It's, it's, we must absolutely show it as well. When you know that someone is hurting, had a bad day, or even a bad hair day, do you comfort them? Do you show them love? Do you give them a hug? Do you sit down and talk with them and show them that you care and that it's okay? Take some time and think about how you show others how much you care and love them. 
And please don't limit your life by limiting your love. Use the spiritual power and force of love that is within you. How often we have heard the words that God is love, and how often do we hear about the laws of the universe, universal laws, and in this case, the law of love. The law of love states that we must recognize and accept the fact that love is our true nature. Love is energy and the building block for all things. Only through love can we build, expand, and grow. Only through love can we center ourselves and stay connected to our inner source. Unconditional love is also called divine love, and it is the highest form of love. It is the total acceptance of others as they are, without judgment, without expectation, without attempting to change them. The law of love ensures that we recognize the truth in unity and let go of the illusions of separation, for we are our one. We hear this all the time. Just as we need unity within this church in order to grow, to build on love to grow in love, and to help and serve with love. Perhaps St. Francis of Assisi thus described the law of love. And he said, it is in giving love that we receive love. So very simple, yet so very profound. I have a question for you, and that is, do you think that we can put spiritual force and power of love back into Valentine's Day? Instead of sending out cards or buying gifts, we could use Valentine's Day as an opportunity to broaden our understanding of love and its power. If it's true that what the world needs now is love, sweet love, we should put this power back into our most popular annual day of love. People all over the world are learning that love is not just an emotion or a sentiment. Since love is the most powerful force, if we know how to use it, we can send it to heal and transform even the most difficult relationships. Love is the main ingredient in healing. Why not use this Valentine's Day as a day devoted to healing and restoring the relationships in your life? The process is really quite simple, and if you will, I'd like us to give it a try right now. I'd like you to take a minute and think about a relationship in your life that you feel either needs a lot of healing or even maybe just a tiny bit of healing. And then sit quietly with your feet flat on the floor, eyes closed. Take some nice long cleansing, deep breaths, and relax. Relax. Feel your entire body relaxing into your seat. Now, think about this relationship that you'd like to transform. Picture the person involved in your mind's eye. It doesn't matter if you cannot see an image. A thought is as powerful as an image. So think about this person. And imagine this person surrounded with light and love. You may want to use a pink blanket or a pink bubble of light to surround them. And see the pink, see the pink light caressing them with love. Now visualize the two of you interacting with one another in a way that you would like your relationship to be now. Imagine that both of you are saying or doing something positive with each other. See the two of you smiling at one another. Feel a positive emotion within you, like love or joy, as you watch this image or feel the energy of what is taking place between the two of you. Visualize yourself as joyfully celebrating 
the transformation of this relationship. Feel the joy, feel the love, the deep spiritual love between you. And now let the image go, breathing deeply, long cleansing deep breaths. Before you come back to the here and now, visualize yourself enthusiastically sharing this process with a good friend and telling them how well it worked for you. And when you're finished with that, you can come back to the here and now, hopefully feeling at ease and relaxed, having had some sort of a positive uh, experience with the person. And know that you can very quickly and easily do this process at home. It, it works best if you do it twice a day, and you must expect to see positive results. Then if throughout the day, the negativity of that creeps in, remind yourself that the love works and see that relationship very quickly in your mind or, or the situation in a positive manner. It's that simple. So Valentine's Day is a great opportunity for us to broaden our understanding of love and its power. Can you imagine what would happen if everyone in the world chose to dedicate Valentine's Day as a day of reconciliation and healing? Just imagine all the broken families reunited in love. The stressful work environments transformed into a place of loving support and respect. Communities uniting to create places of harmony and opportunity for everyone. If we would all recognize our own true identities and the true identities of other, others as being of light and love, using our divine power for the good of all, imagine how much would change on this earth plane. We can change the world. We all know this. We can change it through our thoughts, our words, our visions, and through the spiritual power of love. And as we evolve in consciousness, which I am sure that is the goal of everyone in this chapel, as you do this, do all you can to work on moving into the divine, sacred love consciousness, the Christ consciousness, the God consciousness, the ever-evolving unity consciousness. Now, as we do all this, let us not forget about self-love. This is extremely important. This has nothing to do with being conceited or selfish. It is simply choosing to fall in love with who we are. As we strive to live our lives more godlike, why is it so hard to believe that we could, fall, we could fall in love with ourselves, with all our wonderful God qualities and gifts that each one of us has? Too often we, we try to find love from out here, when what we really need is to find love in here. We hear this all the time, but sometimes we forget we need to be reminded. Now, a person who dislikes him or herself is in constant turmoil. And I don't, who wants to live that way? I know I don't. So falling in love with ourselves allows us to experience a wonderful sense of discovery. We begin to see ourselves through new vision and to see more and more of all the little details that make each of us so unique. So if you're not having a love affair with yourself, what's holding you back? Give yourself the most beautiful gift of all. Once we discover how much there is about ourselves to fall in love with, we can't help but want to treat others lovingly and respectfully, to treat ourselves that way, just as we would treat anyone that we love and who is special to us. Now God's expression of a spiritual man or woman is not of physical qualities. It is of qualities that are truly in everyone, even if we can't see it. And we do know this because we read this in the very first book of the Bible, in Genesis, as it describes man as God created, made in God's spirit, image, and likeness. We can look for 
and see someone's spiritual self through their spiritual qualities that he or she expresses, perhaps through their generosity, their intelligence, their joy, their kindnesses. And these qualities are not physical, are they? They're the divine spiritual nature or presence 